Now, the question is the following. How do we reconcile the track that we want to embark on with the real situation? First of all, we need to understand what the tracks are, the pathways. Some of them are suggested by the uh, IPCC work, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climatic Changes, and uh, these provide images of the future. But let us remind ourselves of the context in which the IPCC work was published. This intergovernmental panel provides very exhaustive reports, several thousands of pages, reviewing the situation of the scientific knowledge. The current report is the fifth. And it states that man's action on the climate generate risks, the consequences of which would be detrimental for the planet. And alarms uh, have been uh, launched more intensively ever since the third report. In the second report in 1995, the IPCC said that in 2100, the warming would be two degrees Celsius. The IPCC researchers are looking at scenarios on the long term until 2100 to provide pictures of the future, which means that they are really doing a very sensitive work because these scenarios have an impact on political issues. How come? Well, because when scientists start talking about a reference scenario, a reference scenario corresponding to business as usual, if we just continue doing things as we do them now, politicians and decision makers fear that this reference scenario will be adopted as a real reference versus the efforts that have been made. Now, also, these pathways that describe uh, anthropic uh, greenhouse effect gas emissions correspond to areas or sectors, industries, and because they are based on a disaggregated vision of the world, it would be easy to think of blaming some people for them, and politicians don't want this to happen. So scientists want to make sure that the pictures of the future will not be politically prescriptive. But this means that they have to also draw awareness on the uncertainty, and they have to make these visions transparent, but also open for discussion. Therefore, they must keep apart politics from science. A special report called Summary for Policy Makers or Decision Makers was therefore published, a shorter report, and it will be published every time the IPCC submits a report. And this summary report must be validated by all of the uh, politicians uh, participating in the negotiation. Every single line in the report must be approved politically. And this means that the uh, summary report is relevant and actually representing all of the national interests, although these are very different and divergent. These uh, lines, elements are summarized in a uh, book written by Stéphane Kut and Demi and Amy Dehon, which I recommend you read. So what do we find in this summary? Well, curves summarizing the scientific uh, work. And uh, I'd like you to look at this particular graph showing a picture of the future looking at different options and based on 900 scenarios themselves based on models which were made available by the scientists in order to prepare this summary. Thanks to this uh, picture and that shows the dispersion, we understand that a consensus might be found which would match 
the opinions uh, of uh, different policymakers and of different countries with different interests. Take the countries belonging to AOSIS, uh, small insular states in the Pacific Ocean, Bangladesh, and a few countries which already have suffered from climatic events and which are threatened by these events, these countries will find that their interests are defended because the different scenarios here show, for instance, that uh, it is a possibility that in the year 2100 the emissions will shoot to the stars. Also, some countries would like to make sure that historic responsibility will be taken in consideration and they want the weight of past emissions to be calculated in the uh, efforts to come. Some countries want to lay the emphasis on future emissions and the oil producing countries would like only CO2 to be uh, excluded, that the other gases will be to blame but not CO2 for global warming. So there are different political messages here at play with underlying graphs and curves uh, which go in rather different directions. Now, beyond the political message, we should not forget that the uh, substance, uh, the data supplied by the IPCC and the warning message should lead to some decision making. But as Amy Dahan says in this uh, quotation, next to the uh, current situation, which is running out of control, we are also manufacturing slowness, we write documents, we make them longer, shorter, but we postpone the decisions year after year. And because we need to find a consensus, when there is a divergence, we discuss the, subs the, uh, the form rather than the substance. We set ourselves long-term objectives, but, and, but we don't talk about how we're going to meet those objectives. And therefore, it is absolutely essential that we find a way to reconcile different time scales in order that we meet our objectives and we match the objectives with the real situation. But this means that we're going to have to take into consideration the redistribution of economic power and the uh, climate deadline. In order to reconcile these uh, different objectives and understand what these pathways mean, we also need to understand that the greenhouse effect gases come from different origins. Therefore, one given pathway will translate methane emissions coming from uh, rice fields or CO2 emissions will coming from the industry of transportation, nitrous oxide emission due to the use of fertilizers. And how do we really find the truth behind these different emission pathways. This means we're going to have to try to interpret the data, the consequence of which will be that the, the future results will be prescriptive and we will need to come up with some kind of metrics and measurements in order to meet our objective for greenhouse effect gases which uh, will match the climatic objectives. But this means we need to follow Gaston Berger's advice and use a prospective approach with models that will shed light on the future. I'd like to remind you of a metaphor which uh, I think we should read together again and think about it, connecting the real situation with a long-term objective means that our civilization is comparable to a car being driven faster and faster on an unknown road uh, in the night. We need the headlamps to have a longer and longer range if we want to avoid uh, a traffic incident.